Hey guys, and welcome to Tanashi's Movie Corner. Uh, today I am joined by Brad, so say hi, Brad. Hey, everyone. And uh, we are going to be discussing defending the special editions of the original trilogy. So already, I <laughs> this is going to be a bit of an uphill battle, I'm sure, uh, because we've already gone through extensively discussing the prequels and the original trilogy and our thoughts on them. Uh, and everything, and you know, I've always defend the prequels whenever I get the chance. I don't always defend the original trilogy because I don't really have to. But a lot of people hate the prequels, and you know, I, he's heard me a lot talk about it. But I've had to come to their defense quite often because I do think they're good movies. I think they're all good movies. I'm a Star Wars fan overall, and so I like all of that. I like the Clone Wars. I like Rebels, which I'll get into in another video. But um, So we wanted to go through and talk about the special editions of the original trilogy um, that originally came out in 97 and then they kind of kept some of the changes, improved upon some of the changes and added some changes to the uh, Blu-ray release uh, 2011, uh, which they've kept. So they've kind of disregarded the uh, trilogy as it was and that makes a lot of people mad uh, and a lot of people really love the trilogy as it was and they they hate upon the special editions so we wanted to discuss some of that so I'm gonna let you start off uh, New Hope well that that's a change on its own but the first first one episode 4 New Hope had a lot of changes to it and we saw a video showcasing a lot of the changes done to it and you didn't even remember how it was uh, before so right go memory ahead. was really fuzzy on that note right so go ahead and uh, discuss to me some of the stuff that you saw and what you think first I will say that simple changes like the coloring just being better and all that you know obviously is always a good thing you know to get a to get a movie that has this polish I like how they have some of these establishing shots like for Moss Eisley's that really kind of add to what this city looks like. It gives you a better feel for what this place actually is because you see a lot more of it. You know, in the original cut of the movie, you barely saw anything, you know, and this part is expanded. You know, you also... So you, are you talking about the wide shots or are you talking about like the creatures and stuff? That's I'm actually talking about both. Okay. I, I actually like both because the white like i said the white shots give you more of what the city looks like it gives you a sense of where you are what these people are kind of like all that kind of stuff and the creatures just kind of add to the alien like you know the alien aspect of this planet you know because you got these different creatures and like you know and they're and they help these natives like traverse you know the desert and all that stuff so i actually liked all of that now, i know uh, part at least a counter argument to that is that well this is established on Tatooine. Tatooine's, you know, the the furthest from. If there's a center, you know, it's the planet furthest from. Uh, so it's it's on the outskirts, outer rim, as, as uh, it gets put. And uh, as such, it wouldn't have all these creatures and all these aliens. It just wouldn't be as lively as what is done uh, to, the, to the new edits of it. So that's kind of the counter... Uh, a counter argument to that I would argue however that there is actually more life in the desert than one imagines because when you think about a desert you think oh well there must be nothing there but there are actually animals that do adapt to survive that environment and you look at these things like uh, I don't actually remember what any of these are called but those, <laughs> yeah. but like those creatures yeah. that the stormtroopers are riding they're you know they're big lizards you know they have like that you know that skin that's meant to keep in the moisture and all that stuff you know so yeah even though this is a desert planet, you know, these things have adapted, you know, in a way that would let them survive. And, you know, you would expect that there'd be some kind of animals that live on this planet. You know, it's not just a nothing ball, because otherwise, why would anybody be here at all? You know? well, I would argue, too, um, that particular creature we saw in the 77 release, uh, it was in the background. It's very vague, kind of, because, you know, at the time, I don't think they could... I've really constructed it well but it is there there's one of them there but it is there so uh that's the thing also uh people get upset over a rock being put in front of r2 when he's hiding um from the tuscan raiders so 
Now, to be fair, they might have overdone this a little bit, but I'm not sure how he got in there. But the concept, though, is that he's actually hiding behind something makes a little bit more sense than him being virtually out in the open. Right, know? right. Um, other changes they've done is they changed uh, Obi Wan's kind of call that he does to scare him off. That didn't really bother me. Um, they've changed small little bits of dialogue, but not that much. They've just kind of added to it a little bit. I don't think anyone's really noticed. They did a wide shot of Obi-Wan's kind of uh, house before they went in there. And they took out, uh, in the pub scene, they took out the the guy that was wearing the cheap uh, Walmart Wolfman mask and added in an alien and the shots that he was a part of. Um, and then, of course, we get to the Han shooting first situation, which has caused wide panic across across the world. Everyone is up in arms on this, ready to kill their neighbor. No, <laughs> but really though, people like people really took this to task, and and the reason being because they said, well, Han shooting first is an establishment of what his character is uh, and a new ho- at the beginning there and how it over the course of the trilogy he changes he evolves and you lose an aspect of that when you don't see him willing to do something like that and then of course Lucas came out and said well the reason he changed it was because he didn't think it made sense for Leia to fall in love with a character that's willing to just kill and that Han was kind of reminiscent of what John Wayne was, his character in the old movies, you know, Cowboy, where he wouldn't be the first one to pull the trigger, but he would be the last one. So uh, people have been, you know, up in arms about it, and it's it's changed. It used to be Han shooting first, 77, and then in 97 it went to uh, Greedo shoot, shooting first, and Han kind of somehow dodged it and it looked kind of a little awkward and then in the uh 2011 release it went into them both shooting almost at the same time you really can't tell much of a difference there uh so going by that one you know what are your thoughts on it and do you understand at least where you know where people are coming from here or they're saying about his character i both do and i don't Okay. I mean, that one where, that we saw from, I believe it was the 97, that one did look a little odd because they had to digitally move him, like, a little over, I think, to pull yeah, that off. Yeah, they moved his head over. Um, but realistically, I don't get why this is such a big issue. I mean, either way, it kind of works out about the same thing. And no, both of them feel like they would actually fit with this character, whether he shot first or he kind of, like, you know, just sidestepped and shot simultaneously or whatever. So... Greedo is a bounty hunter, though. You think he'd be professionally trained to hit someone that's right in front of him? Yeah, you would think so, but <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes that cockiness will get you down. Yeah. Well, then we got the the Jabba scene. A lot of people don't like that either. They think that it takes away from the suspense that's built up of not knowing who Jabba is until Return of the Jedi. And um, thing is. Jabba was always supposed to be in this. He wasn't in the 77 release because they weren't quite sure, A, what Jabba was going to look like at that point because they had a human in, in place of him. And B, they couldn't do any kind of technology at that point to really showcase Jabba. So he had to go back and put him in there like he wanted uh, in the 97. And then he, you know, as the CG got better, he kind of changed it, uh, added a little bit to it to make Java look a little better for the 2011 one. Um, But there's like an entire little, oh, an entire scene and then set up for the scene that involves Java in there. And first showing us Boba Fett, which we actually didn't see until Empire originally. So uh, what do you think about that? I think uh, for me, it actually doesn't bother me at all that they had this little thing where he has to talk to Job and explain us like, hey, look, I'm going to have some money for you. I'm going to have extra money for you to like smooth this over. But, you know, I got this job to do first and all that kind of stuff. The only aspect of this scene that bothers me is the fact that Han gets away with disrespecting Jabba. Right. But the concept itself about having to talk to Jabba about this and all that stuff, that doesn't bother me at all. In fact, it seems that that, that would actually fit. You know, because Jabba was concerned about his money, and he would he did 
have Greedo over there, and that Greedo issue got it, you know, got talked about. Right. Okay. I mean, I can take it or leave it, but it really doesn't bother me as much as it bothers a lot of people. And I, you know, look, it was supposed to be there. It couldn't have been originally. So he, when he got the chance, he put it there. You just kind of got to get over it. Like, it, I don't think it really takes away from the story, though. And you get more shots of, like, the Falcon taking off and stuff like that. Also, with planets being destroyed, with Death Stars de- being destroyed, you get an added ring to it, added effect. looks, I, I think, much better. The actual fight at the end, they have gone uh, more CG on, which I think looks really good compared to the original, which was stiff models just moving around, and you can really tell on that one they've improved the lightsabers as well uh you know the color to them the fact that they're covering up the sticks i remember obi-wan seeing the stick instead of the lightsaber i remember seeing the stick now i didn't remember vader's lightsaber being completely different color apparently that was an adjust um adjustment as well that they made but i i do remember that also the thing about uh new hope is that they went and added a scene with his an entire scene with his friend I forget what his friend's name was um, but they added him in there and he had referenced him earlier on in the movie to, so to see them reconnect and then ultimately you, you know he dies uh, but to get all that I think did contribute quite a bit more and I don't think people's problems are really the sound and picture quality improving as much as it, they're upset with any changes that are done but I think a lot of the changes we just mentioned, some are little dialogue changes that people probably wouldn't even notice, but then some of them are a little bit bigger alterations or adding stuff in. But I think it works overall. So I don't understand that one. Uh, but we've already reached about the 12-minute mark, so let's go ahead and move on to Empire. Empire has probably the least amount of changes, I think, uh, of the entire thing, and the less controversial. So we're not going to spend too much time here. But I want to say that they added uh, the scene with the, uh, what is it, the, the Wampa? Is that yes, what they actually added the Wampa to where you actually see it versus yeah. that little bit of glimpse I think you had in the in the um, original cut. Right. I, I think that was just an improvement. I mean, there's it's just there and it improves the scene. I don't think it took anything away from the scene. Um, so moving on from that, we get the Emperor. They changed the Emperor. They gave him kind of... They used, used the look from episode three on him. I think that looks much better, right? Indeed, that's that's dramatically better than what they had before, which was just really odd to look at. Well, and they changed his voice, too. He has more of a presence to his voice because he sounds like the Emperor we know from six and from three, uh, So, which they may not have had a grasp on at the time that they did it. Um, they opened up Cloud City. You got more shots of it. I think that works way better than being confined as it was. Uh, so I think having the windows there, seeing the background and everything really works out well. They changed Boba's voice. A lot of people, for some reason, don't like that, but it sticks with continuity, so I think that works. Uh, what else? Uh, there, there's a few line uh, changes, but again, they're not really noticeable unless you're you're absolutely looking for it few line changes and i think a little bit of audio got changed up yeah like it got enhanced in like uh where he's like where he's in that i don't even know what i call this thing it's right before he falls though you know whatever this big space is that's in cloud city you know uh they like took out some things that were audio it's kind of an audio mess i think uh, where the, it was uh, there and they you, cleared the it uh carbonation chamber is that what you're talking about well technically they're not in the carbonation chamber they're like somewhere else by this point in the story but well I didn't know where you were talking about okay it's well, like they were at the carbonation chamber then yeah, they've been right. fighting and they got to this big old pit <laughs> oh you mean we're okay you're talking about where he's falling and they gave him the emperor yell from return of the Jedi and then they took that out and well it. even before that I think yeah. they had some kind of noise yeah they had they some weird up. yeah thing uh okay I get what you're talking about anyway so yeah I mean that that about covers it um there's a few song changes too, actually. I think it was in this one. They had a few song changes where they did the Imperial theme. Oh, you see Vader leaving and ending up on uh, the Star Destroyer. So I, I, I mean, that's just, it's not technically necessary, but I like it. I like the shot. So anyway, go ahead and move on to uh, Return of the Jedi. 
So we do get some definite changes in this one, uh, changes that people were just not happy with. Uh, one is adding Jedi rocks, well, adding, uh, replacing uh, the original song that was in Jabba's Palace with Jedi rocks and incorporating CGI uh, singers and everything, um, as well as getting to the uh, uh, tw Twi'lek, is that, did I just say the name wrong? Twi'lek, is that? Yeah, I think that's how you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, Twi'lek Twi that falls down and to a r where their rancor is, and you you see a shot of her landing and then seeing as a, a gate rises up, but you don't see what the thing is, and you hear her yell. Now, I will say that about this like music thing, I really don't know why people hate this as much as they do, especially since we we watched that comparison of what they had before and what they you know have now with the Jedi Rocks thing. Yeah, that original thing is just... It's just atrocious. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't sound. It actually sounds worse. And when you're looking at like the alien singer and stuff like that, it's like super stiff. You know, yeah. it, it's just really weird. I think tonally, maybe the reason they're going is that the music originally seems more like a mobbish type setting music. You know, more like a like a I guess slow nightclub type thing. Whereas the music is more almost popish. Uh, in the recent one, but I don't really get it either. For me personally, I I like it. I mean, it's it more of a party. He's a rich crime lord, you know. He's kind of enjoying the spoils of his ill-gotten wealth. Yeah. So it makes sense that he'd be kind of having this atmosphere. Well, it's like, oh, look at me, I'm awesome. We have this kind of atmosphere going on around. Again, I don't think many people notice the new scene either with her falling and everything. I I like that. Um, it's not necessary, but it does elevate it a little bit where if you're watching it for the first time you're like oh sh shit what's be what's behind this gate you know so I don't know um, but anyway so yeah uh, you got Boba flirting people some people had problems with that I don't understand that you got again small uh, improvements on like Han coming out um, from, from being uh, in the uh, carbonite or whatever so you have that happen but uh, moving from that going straight now to the uh, to the asshole uh, and the desert which now it's no longer an asshole because <laughs> it's got like a mouth it's got a head yes yes it's got a penis that's coming out <laughs> 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 oh no no <laughs> No, Star Wars. No. I did not go there. Okay. <laughs> no, it's it's got well, like one of those plant things that uh, Venus flytraps. That's what I was looking at, right? It's like a it's kind of like a Venus flytrap ish thing and it's it's in the center of of this uh pit. And a lot of people had problems with it, but I don't have any problems with it actually. It makes a lot more sense than just, you know, an asshole. <laughs> like, you made it works out better to have a penis. A penis, penis, a penis and an asshole makes a lot more sense, okay, than just the asshole. Okay, I'm gonna go on record and say that it makes more sense. Wow. I mean, no wonder they're afraid. I'd be terrified. <laughs> Remember, all the opinions that he's expressed are just his alone. Okay. <laughs> they don't represent everybody. Okay. Right. Right, that's true. Okay, okay. Um, but weird metaphor it. aside, it does make <laughs> yeah. it does make more sense to have yeah. this actual creature in this hole instead of just having this empty space. It's like throw down this pit. Yeah, it always makes more sense to have something in the hole. Okay. <laughs> All right, we, we need to move on. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, I don't know how how that happened. Okay, so moving on uh, from that. I don't recall there being too much after that. We get the Ewoks that can blink. I forgot to mention the creature in A New Hope actually can blink too in the in the uh, compactor. Yeah, it's just small little thing. That sewage creature that makes no sense. Right, well, that's blink. a whole other thing. <laughs> anyway, so the Ewoks can blink. Uh, there's, you know, uh, the lightsabers are again improved. Which is nice. Um, there's uh, the end celebration thing. Uh, you have more showcasing more Ewoks celebrating, which is cool. 
Um, oh, going back to the, the Darth Vader battle. He does say no as he's lifting up Luke. I don't like it. That's the one scene I just don't I don't get. I actually don't like. Uh, because it was so much more emotionally impactful for me to just see his face. Which isn't even his face. <laughs> you know, it's a helmet. But to see the reflection of the lightning, to see Luke what struggling and what the Emperor, his face, is going through. And to see going back and forth between Vader and then he picks up uh, the Emperor and everything. I thought that was much better than the, no. No. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that last part. <laughs> was that, was was that not there? No, I uh, probably should have been there. Okay. But <laughs> now having his eyebrows not be there, uh, which they did. They incorporated his eye eyebrows no longer being a part of it. I'm perfectly okay with that. That keeps with continuity and everything. That makes sense. Um, but then going down and seeing Cloud City and, and getting a shot of them celebrating, opening that up, uh, going to Coruscant, that was cool. If you see uh, the Emperor statue like Paul over, that was nice as well. Going to Naboo and hearing, uh, uh, we free! Okay. I understand why people might not like that little bit, that little t you can you can almost ignore that though. That's like almost not there, but it makes sense to incorporate Naboo and having Jar Jar was like an F you to fans, I'm sure, but I I'm personally fine with that. It's like one to two seconds worth of footage anyway. So. Yeah, it's, it's not even. But having Tatooine's like the least likely, like one I would think would be in there, and yet it is in there. I think that's just because that's where Luke and Anakin came from, so they were like, oh, we're, we're going to incorporate this, but it really doesn't make sense, because they're under the control of the huts, and they're in the outer rim, and don't really fall to the em Emperor as, as much. I fall to the Empire's command, so I, I didn't really understand that one, per se. Uh, replacing the song uh, Nub Nub with uh, Nub Nub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Nub Nub. <laughs> I don't even remember what they called it, they replaced it with. They just replaced it with kind of like a steady uh, soundtrack. I'm perfectly fine with that. Yeah, I like that score a lot better than whatever this nonsense was with the Ewoks. Of course, I don't even particularly care for the Ewoks, but I, don't I felt like this score was actually a lot more with the score that you traditionally get with the Star Wars right. stuff in general. Right, than, than just one uh, yum nub thing. Just, no. Yeah, <laughs> And then, of course, uh, you see, uh, you know, Hayden Christensen show up as Anakin instead of Sebastian Shaw who I believe was the Vader in the suit and that causes a lot of controversy and I've said for the record over and over again continuity wise it makes perfect sense to me um, makes sense to you? I've yeah, been talking a lot yeah it does yeah, um, no. and I really like the fact that they had this thing where it kind of referenced what he was last like as a Jedi versus that versus what they had, you know, in the original cut. And the thing about the original cut is it never really made sense. I mean, Vader didn't look like that when he died. Yep, you no. know, he just kind of took on a different form, you know, when they went through with that. And this one at least ties in with the prequels, which I actually do like that they tied in with the prequels. And they tied in when, when he was last a Jedi instead of just kind of creating some figure for him. Well, and I always thought, too, I said, okay, this makes sense because... When was he last a Jedi? Well, he was last a Jedi when he was as Hayden Christensen in Episode 3 before he turned. And people were like, oh, no, well, that doesn't make any sense because he saved Luke, right? That makes him become a Jedi. No. That's one good act to save a son. Just because he did a good act does not make him a Jedi. Han did several good acts. That does not make him a Jedi. Um, I think, you know... Encompassing him as a Jedi was back when he was Hayden. And the whole reason why Sebastian Shaw showed up in Jedi robes and with hair and no scars and, and everything on him is because originally he was much older when he turned. And so that's what he looked like. And in this, because they did the prequels and he was younger when he turned, that's what they kept to. And it makes perfect sense to me that as a Jedi, he was last. Uh, as Hayden and Lucas has even come out and said in an interview uh, that I, I watched and I was surprised I was like yes this kind of proves that I was had the right mind to 
uh, right frame of mind thinking about this because Hayden uh, basically a viewer had asked a question about it and Lucas had said that that was when uh, Vader was last a Jedi and that's that's what this thing was all about so that's why obi wans still old <laughs> and Yoda is still old it's because they were you know they were last Jedis at that point when they died whereas Vader was not um, and it, otherwise, why would Vader be a full body at all? Why wouldn't he be a floating torso, you know, and, and have his Vader outfit on instead of Jedi robes like that? So that didn't really make any sense to me to do it. Uh, I mean, flying torso would have been hilarious to watch, but well, it, it wouldn't have, have gone with the theme of what they were going with. That was kind of well, and people, <laughs> people were always like, too. Uh, they were always like, well, how would he even know who he is? I, you know, I don't think, certainly Luke isn't like a, a Sherlock Holmes, right? Uh, he doesn't have that kind of skill, I'm sure. But I don't know. You're looking over, you're seeing uh, Ghost Obi-Wan show up. You're like, hey, I know that guy. You see Ghost Yoda show up. You're like, hey, I know that guy. You see a ghost younger person show up and you're like, well, my dad just did, he just died. And he's the only one I know that could possibly do this that just died. Uh, I'm gonna go and say he's my dad. Yep, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Instead of be like, who the hell are you? Get out of here, you uh, ghost weirdo. Plus, can't this isn't Jedi your celebration. Like, can't Jedi like sense this sort of thing anyway? Uh, okay. <laughs> Sure, I don't. <laughs> I don't really know on that. I don't. I, and there's a little issue I have with that whole thing, but we'll get to that in another video. But anyway, so those are the most noteworthy ones, right? I don't think I missed any. Did I miss? Yeah, any? I think other things were smaller, like audio changes, like yeah, adding more detail changes. to stuff, which makes it look a whole lot better. You right. Know, I don't think sort of people thing. have problems with that. That's what comes with being in a Blu-ray. So. That's not as big as the scene. Changes, right, but I people think. tend to overlook it entirely, you know. I know, and comparing them side by side, there's so much more good, in my opinion, than bad. Particularly because I only had one bad point, and that was the no. Um, because a lot, like a lot of people are like, okay, for me, generally speaking, if it doesn't take away from the scene. And in many instances, it adds to the scene. Then, generally, it's better. And so many of these changes, so many of these uh, additions to it, in my opinion, don't take away from the scene. I just don't. I don't see it. And a lot of times, I think it adds to the scene, and people might not even notice it because some of them are really kind of subtle changes, and some of them are more in your face. You know, when comparing them. Now, if you per still prefer the original trilogy as it was, I mean, I guess more power to you. You know, I saw it as it originally was. It's been a long time, but I've seen it as it originally was. And I've seen it at the 97 uh, updated, I guess, special editions. And then I've seen it now that I own it on Blu-ray. I'd much rather watch it now than watch it as it was. I much completely. rather. And again, I have one point that I don't like that I think really takes away, and I wish it hadn't have been there. But that is one point. So, yeah. So uh, that's my thoughts on it. Any uh, last things to wrap up? We have gone on for a while now. Most wow, this video is going to end up being I've like talked a lot, like half an hour. But yeah, I think we touched over everything. And for me personally, I think if you like something, then adding in a lot of better color, a lot of better texture, adding in some things that, like we said, most of these improved on it. And I liked that they actually took something that was good and found a way to improve on it. I don't like, I don't understand this concept. It's like, well, just don't change it. Even though it could be better, just leave it the way it was, you know, if we could make this change. So I'm all for this, you know, the special editions. Yeah, um, 
Absolutely. I'm all for them too. So go ahead and let me know uh, in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think about it? You know, if you're just a fan, if, if you're a hardcore fan of the uh, you know original trilogy as it was, go ahead and tell me what it is about the original trilogy. Why it has to be that way. Why are you not okay with the special editions? You know, why is it? Because maybe I'm missing something. I could be missing something. I think for me personally, I feel like a lot of it is nostalgia. And nostalgia doesn't really grip me like it did. Because it did. It just doesn't grip me now like that. So I just can't look at it in that in that sense. But if it's more than that, uh, please, by all means, let me know what it is. And if it is that, let me know. Because that's fine too. That happens. But anyway, so that'll wrap this up. Uh, and until next time, peace.